Welcome to the first ever Climatology Puppet Show! Woo! We're your hosts, the Trex the T-Rex, and Hatao! And our very pretty Game Master, Nika Anelli! It's time for a session of your favorite Once a Project Informational Puppet Show on the Planet! And for today's contestants, we welcome two of our own members, Mr. Erwin Saludo and Ali Aquino. Give them a round of applause, folks! Hey. So, how you all doing in this fine pandemic day? Well, hello guys! I'm happy to be with you today. I'm good. Uh, probably uh, doing some routine of sleeping, eating, and studying. That's it. So, hello! I'm doing good as well. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad our contestants are all doing good. Now you've met our very charming contestants on with the show! Before that, our dearest contestants, we assume you know how the game works? Mm, yes, probably. So far, yes! We'll explain it anyway! The game consists yes. of three rounds with three questions each. And each round is increasing in difficulty. You'll tell a story, factoid, or information, and we'll alert both contestants and the audience when it's question time! Round 1 called Obviously Easy because that's how it goes. You get one point for each right answer. And then we step it up a little bit for round 2. But no worries, they're not that hard yet. Oh, but good luck with the third one though. For every wrong answer, you get deducted! At least for the second and third rounds, one minus one each. At the end of the round, the player with the lowest score will have to do... Truth or dare! Minus the truth. You get to do a dare. Randomly picked from a bowl of consequences. For your lovely game master right over here. So, how are you two feeling right now? I'm a little bit nervous because I don't study for this. Oh yes, I can do it. Well, you, Ali, can you do it, Ali? Um, I think I can do it. I have my competitive spirit running through my blood. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I also have my stock knowledge here. <laughs> Our topic okay. for today is dating methods, obsidian hydration, and tetrophonology. Ooh, sounds exciting, doesn't it? But before we discuss them, what is obsidian? And what is tetrachronology even? One thing's for sure is that it's not edible. Anyways, let's start with one of the hardest rocks to mine in Minecraft, obsidian. Obsidian is an igneous rock. Meaning it's formed from molten rock material. That forms when this molten rock material cools so rapidly, no crystals are formed. Because of this, this rock forms more smoothly, where it's labeled as a volcanic glass, and was used extensively by ancient humans for tools due to its ability to be easily fractured by force and sharpness. Obsidian usually comes in black, but they can also come in colors of brown, tan, green, or rarely can be in red, blue, orange, or yellow. I think it's exclusive. We studied this in geography. It's exclusive, so um, my answer is letter A. I think I'm, I'm gonna go with the same answers as Ali because as, as far as I know, uh, obsidian is being formed outside the uh, volcano. So I'm gonna go with A too. And the correct answer is A! Yay! Both the answer! That wasn't so bad, was it? Well, that was an easy one. Anyway, on with the show! Since obsidian is formed from molten rock, or we know as either lava or magma. We, why don't we talk about volcanoes? Volcanoes, majestic forces of nature capable of causing destruction, not only to its nearby inhabitants, but even the whole world! Just ask Pinatubo or El Chicon as they lowered the entire global temperature by a few point degrees. And, and fun fact, they can even cause extinction events. What's fun to think about that? Destruction and catastrophes and the end of the world. Fun indeed. But to cut your train of thought, it's question time! 
Well, for me, I'm I'm really sure because I have written one article about it in our college publication. It, it's Taal. It's last January. I think it's Taal. I remember correctly the news that's so traumatic for the people there. And the answer is me! Both of you get to point. Good job, good job. Let's take it up a notch. So, Hatao, talk about obsidian and volcanoes anyway. Well, my good old friend, Rex, did you know it's possible to know the date and climate from both obsidian and volcanoes? Oh, wow. The things you miss out when you're dead for a million years. Well, not exactly volcanoes, but the ash! It's every layer of ash created by erupting volcanoes is different within plants. You can create a timeline of what has happened. And with obsidian, can even do it too. Since fresh obsidian can absorb more water in the air and create a new layer, you can also make a timeline of what happened. But how can you say, say this spot was made during the time Jesus was born? Or if the rains were blessed down in Africa during the 1800s? How can you put a date on such things? Let's find them out on the next round. But before that, it's... It's a... I don't know. <laughs> Just a hunch. Oh my gosh, this is a really hard question. I'm gonna use my special method in choosing my answer. Well, I have used it to pass my buset. It's my secret, but I think it's letter C. <laughs> Let's see if your hunches are right. Oh my gosh, this is a wild guess. I don't even know what to do. It's the moment of truth. And the answer is... C! Geochronology! <laughs> oh yes. I'm sorry, your hunch was not correct. I'm correct! Right. For the round one punishment, Ali will... Write something on his forehead. I'm going to write um a Morse code. Be the Ayana. Now let's move on to dating methods. Ooh, a date. Yes, yeah, something you've never had. Anyway, dating is used to determine the age of an artifact. For now, why don't we focus on the use of chemical methods? Say, Trex, I heard dating methods involving chemical changes can be divided into two categories. True indeed, my tasty looking human friend. Organic and inorganic. Organic involves in amino acid analysis, those things that build up proteins by the way, or organic samples which are used to assess the age of associated organic deposits. Inorganic, on the other hand, encompasses a number of methods that assess the amount of feathering that an inorganic sample has experienced. Just my hunch again, it's... Regis... Ah, the letter B. <laughs> D and E. I kind of have also three hunches, these choices. For me, uh, one is le letter B. Next is paleomagnetics. And the other one is maybe this uh, diagenesis. And the correct answers are A, D, and D. Both of you get a point for getting almost the same what? answers. Hmm, suspicious. Anyways, since we're talking about inorganic and chemical methods, let's check on what really is obsidian dating method. Well, the full name is obsidian hydration rind dating, but we can call it OHD. It's a kind of dating method that uses obsidian to date artifacts relative to or exactly on a certain date. As we briefly discussed before, OHD involves the concept that water would cling towards the surface of volcanic glass accumulate and form an external layer. This layer is amazingly different from the obsidian inside. Most obsidian rocks contain water trapped in it during its formation. When it starts to cool and settle permanently, 
a thick rind forms through the diffusion of water from the atmosphere. This unique layer is appropriately called the hydrated layer. Since obsidian is famous for an ancient tool making, when this volcanic glass is sharpened, modified, and broken by humans, the surface gets exposed again to the elements, and water begins to cling to the surface again. I don't have any idea. I'm gonna go eeny mini miny mo. One, two, three. Is letter D? <laughs> letter B. Just ano, punch again. <laughs> Brace your sleigh. And the correct <laughs> answer is C. Your. Oh my God! Don't feel pain. None of you get the answer. Omg. With this fresh new surface saturated by a new layer of brine out of water. Scientists from the present day can splice the obsidian into very thin sheets and use tools like the microscope to observe them. Not to mention, if there's already high concentrations of water inside the obsidian, it enhances the hydration process. Very interesting. Ooh, does it mean that I can drink from it? No, Trex, it's a rock. Anyway, the OHD method isn't perfect. It has several limitations. And the answer oh. is B, 2.5! <laughs> oh, I'm wrong. It's a rock. We, we're very most, we, we expect it very most that it will absorb less water. For the second punishment, Erwin will dance Macarena for the next round. It's my pleasure. The things I do for grades. Oh my gosh, is this PE? I'm gonna do this until the next round. Yes. Now that we've enjoyed discussing obsidian, don't you think it's about time we move on to tetrachronology? It's the age determination method with the use of layer ashes, or what we scientists call tephras. Layers of it are used for time stratigraphic markers. To clarify, tephra is basically a general term used for volcanic ashes, an airborne pyroclastic material ejected during a volcanic eruption. Extremely explosive volcanic eruptions may cause and produce a massive amount of tephra covering very vast areas. I'll go with my idol, Socrates. I just want to answer Socrates, that's all. I don't care if I'm wrong. I would go with Aristotle. I think Aristotle went ahead before Socrates. Am I right? I don't know who mentoring who. Psych! What? Now put them down again because here's a surprise question! Surprise what? Raise your slate for both questions. The answer for the first question is C. Aristotle. The answer for the second question is Thor Aronson C. Surprises are fun. I hope you enjoy that as much as I did. But anywho, let's continue. Hat out. Where are we again? Yes, Tephra and Tephra chronology. Sometimes, there are organic materials found in a layer of tephra, in which we can date eruptions easier. Whenever something, organic or not, can be found between two known ages of tephra, it becomes some sort of bracket for that material's date. But don't underestimate the sheer force of a glacier. They may move slowly, but they can erode rocks. Such as obsidian, he said it about the hydrophonic properties of obsidian around ago. A fresh new surface is created for water to enter and form a rind. Amazing! The answer is. You're both correct, B! Ali will draw mustache on her face. For overall winner of this game is dun, 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 we have a tie. 